The moon was shining sulkily because she thought the sun had got no business to be there after the day was done. It's very rude of him to come and spoil the fun. The sea was wet as wet could be. The sands were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because there, because no cloud was in the sky. No birds were flying overhead. And there were no birds to fly. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, it would be grand. If seven maids with seven mops wet it for half a year, do you suppose that they could get it clear? I doubt it. Oh, oysters, come and walk with us. A pleasant talk, a pleasant talk, talk along the briny beach. We cannot do more than four. I give a hand to each. Or oyster looked at him. But never a word he said. The oldest, the eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head, meaning to say he did not choose to leave the oyster bed. But four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. Four other oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more and more and more, all hopping through the frothy waves and scrambling to the shore. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock conveniently low, and all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. Time has come to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and saline wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and why their pigs have wings. But wait a bit before we chat, for some of us are out of breath, and some of us are fat. No, no hurry, said the carpenter. They thanked him much for that. A loaf of bread is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar, besides, are very good indeed. Now, if you're ready, oysters, dear, we can begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine. Do you admire the view? It was so kind of you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing but, cut us another slice. I wish you weren't quite so deaf. I've had to ask you twice. Seems a shame, the walrus said, to play this, them such a trick after we brought them out so far and made them trot so quick. The butter spread too thick. I weep for you. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the larger size, holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter, but you've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But the answer came there none. And this was scarcely odd, because they, they'd eaten everything.